Hello, I'm Will. And I'm Sarah. This is our little podcast. About big plays. And you can see us. You can see us, but we can't see you. That's um, right. I hope that's, that's comforting. Right. I don't know. And actually, in some cases, you can't see us. Because if you're not watching this on YouTube, <laughs> then you literally, you can't see us. You can't see us. This is normal. So, announcement. We are coming to YouTube this week. Yes. It's lit. We're having a time. It's been a journey. It's thank you for going on this with me. Thank you. Thank you for the idea. It was Actually, good. this idea is credited to Stratton Smeltzer. Oh, nice. That boy likes watching podcasts, which I was like, that's one of the a thing. One of the few. I know, right? I know. But it's maybe it's easier for people to kind of connect with the Right. They see the person, they're like, Oh, I can maybe trust them or uh, i feel safe yeah i don't know feel safe with us please um this week we are covering proof by david auburn we have the script in hand things are looking good things are looking yes up. i'm trying to get the lighting right um but yeah so do we do just want to do you want to just dive dive right in i don't know do you have any small talk no no i mean this is kind of an exciting episode it's the first time we've been by ourselves in a while yeah that's true i mean like, yeah, i don't even know how to are talk gonna, to you are we, gonna be, are we gonna be a little rusty <laughs> uh you know each week i feel like maybe we are like a, maybe maybe this, we gotta jump that maybe down. every podcast actually feels like our first podcast which that's in beautiful. a way is good yeah it's a little romantic. other other ways it's bad it's like our first date yeah every day that's like our first date i hope not <laughs> I'm just kidding. Our first date was awesome. It was lit. We had a great time. It, it worked out. It worked uh, out. I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> it was sweet. We had a picnic by the river. Will spilled pasta that he was making for the date in his sink. So then he brought uh, um, crackers and cheese. Yeah, crackers and cheese. So. He didn't know I was lactose intolerant, but it's fine. Neither did you. You might be right. At that point? Yeah, it was a long you time ago. You definitely didn't know. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. It was sweet. And he brought, uh, because he's a Boy Scout, little bug. Yeah, I tried to keep the bugs away. It was a bad bug year. <laughs> bad bug year. Down there by the Missouri Is River. there such a thing as a good bug year? Um, no, there's just bad bug years and worse bug years. Oh, uh, like. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, well, so yeah. honestly, it might have been on the lighter end. Yeah, it might have been. It yeah. might have been, you know. But you know what? We all kind of like, you know, that's all have to do with math, right? How many bugs there are, right? Oh, are that there was bugs such a on a, are there are there more bugs one year are there less bugs one year and oh oh my gosh this play has a lot to do with math that was such a good transition thank you oh my gosh wow wow yeah yeah, yeah. thank you for that um but it's by this guy named david auburn and you're gonna start us off with I am. a little bit about uh, mr auburn i'm gonna talk about this guy um so david auburn david is david <laughs> <laughs> wait how does she do it david david my dad likes when I David. am like Alexis at and then, home and then because I really am then, kind of like Alexis. I would say I, personally. I think you, yeah, you are. You yeah, are, you are. I mean, obviously, like you're much more of a real human. Um, sure. But okay, you have not watched all. I've not, not watched all. Six, six, you don't Creek. know. You're right, you're right, sorry. Um, sorry, I get a little defensive about uh my girl Alexis. She's like my favorite female comedic character. She's um, really funny. yeah, no, she's great. Anyway, sorry, Shit's Creek. Digression. David Auburn. David Auburn. Here we are. Who is this guy? David. Um, he is an American playwright, screenwriter, and theater director. But you know what? How did he become to be this guy? Let me tell you. Okay. He was born in Chicago, Illinois. That's Chi Town Babies. That's where the play takes place. Yes, which I thought was interesting because um he was actually raised in Ohio hmm. and uh then they moved to Arkansas when, in nineteen eighty two. Arkansas, interesting. Yeah, but he lives in Chicago now. Um, we're we're getting ahead of ourselves, William. Please. I um, I thought it was funny because it was like it was like there was in an interview they were like, well, why'd you like choose to choose to put it in Chicago? And he gave this like really long winded answer, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh well, you live in Chicago, that's why you. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> or, you're from Chicago, like that's why you put it in there. You know like, what? Could have just said that. People can feel passionate about cities, like. No, I, I know. Yeah, I respect that. Yeah. Well, it, he says this because, or he moved back to Chicago. Um, also, his parents' names are Mark and Sandy, if you were wondering. Uh, Mark no, and I Sandy. Mark and Sandy Auburn. <laughs> um, but he attended the University of Chicago. So then Got he it. moved and stayed there for 
quite some time. Okay. Um, but while he was at the University of Chicago, he was a member of the Off Off Campus Theater, or sorry, Campus there, which is um, it's an improvisational sketch comedy group. Oh, okay. Which I thought that was interesting. Seems like this plays like kind of funny, but it's not like it's a drama. It's not. A, it's not a comedy. No. Yeah, but like there's some funny moments. Yeah, and like, like and they're bold kind of characters and like just say what they feel and yeah i, I think know. even you talked about the importance of like of like just being at least familiar and even good at improv and that how, how that helps you become a better theater maker oh yeah for sure i mean just like being alive on your feet all of that i yeah. mean i think improv is like one of the hardest aspects of theater that you can do bringing new I, ideas oh my gosh day, like, or just like being so were, weird and i yeah. don't know goofy you ever play that game or we played this game where with your actors when you ring a bell and then have to make a different choice and then you go back and you're like okay you have to make a different choice and it's, i used to get so i hate that i hate that I it's hate so that. hard it's so it's hard. so it's hard it's super fun being the director doing that but it's really <laughs> terrible being the actor literally i don't know i just remember i don't even remember what class what teacher anything actually i think it was in um Oh my gosh, shout out to SCAD, shout out to John Prosky, but we weren't actually in com or improv class, we were in um, drama class, and he would say new choice, new tactic, yeah, and then pursue that, yeah. but it was like a serious matter, like it's a little easier to be like in oh, a goofy sure. moment, be like, like now oh, I'm a water pot, yeah. I don't, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's a water pot, <laughs> I don't, yeah, it's water, a watering can, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> Like, that's easy. <laughs> that's easy to be a watering can. It's harder to be like, uh, uh, I'm serious. I want to take you now, or um, uh, I want you out of my house. You know, like thinking yeah. of those stuff on the fly is yeah. like a little more complicated personally. I feel that. Sorry for the watering can. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, we can't cut any stuff out anymore. <laughs> I know. It's exciting. Why? Um, okay, so he earned his BA in English literature nice. at the University of Chicago. Nice. Um, and following, in the following year, he had a fellowship with Amblin Entertainment, and then he actually moved to New York City after that. So, no longer a Chicago boy. Um, and he spent two years at Juilliard's School of Playwriting program. Classic. Which is, um classic i mean between tish and juilliard on this show i feel like we only cover their students but mm -hmm. it's fine um he studied under marcia norman which you might know her from a uh, night mother and she wrote the book and lyrics for secret garden the musical interesting she wrote the libretto wrote for the color purple and she wrote the book for bridges of madison county wow i know you ever read night mother no, but it's actually, there's a movie with Jennifer Lawrence called Night Mother. Really? I think so. Wow, I never. Um, um, the play's incredible. Really? Yeah, it's just two women, and it's super good. We love uh, women. I mean, one, I mean, daughter and mother. It's yeah, super good. No, oh, sick. Yeah, yeah, because daughter it. and mother aren't women. I'm just kidding. You no, just I mean, like, I mean, <laughs> it wasn't like two. It wasn't like two, it wasn't like two yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. No, I get you. Yeah. No, I think Jennifer Lawrence is literally, and it's kind of like a nightmarish. No, that's just called mother. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's different. But it's about a mother and a daughter, right? I have no idea. I've never seen it. Who knows? I've heard it's about climate change. Like it's a, it's a, it's an allegory for climate change. Whoa. Yeah. Anyways, we should cover Good Night Mother on this podcast. I yeah. All, or I'm Night all Mother. Over. Sorry, yeah. not Good Night. Mother. We could have. Oh my gosh. Because uh, I saw it because Benedictine did it way back in the day, way back. I think when I was a freshman. Woo. Yeah, yeah. And so I saw it. And it's like, you know the actress. Who is it? It's uh, uh, Maria Heffron, uh, who lives in Omaha now. Um, good friends with our 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 great podcast guest Catherine Skillen. Her oh. name is now Maria Courtright. Okay, you know what's so weird? What? Gabe Heffernan. Oh, has sorry, Heffron. Name. Oh, he has Maria, a sister named Maria. I think. Oh, different person, yeah. Wild. And then, and then the so that was she was the daughter, and then uh, Rachel, now Rachel Hernandez, wife to Corbin Hernandez, was the mother. And whoa, they they knocked it out of the park. It was super good. Shit. Yeah, it was awesome. All right, bring in some fresh that, blood. Let's that's, go. That stuck with me. I love we could that. track them down. We will. One of them. Dang it. Or both. 
I know where one is. Um, okay. I know where both so- are. <laughs> I digress. We know where you are. We're at Juilliard. Okay, We're sorry. studying under Marsha Norman. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we are. And the other playwright who's kind of in charge of the program is Christopher Durang. Okay. Who he's, is another. He's one we definitely need to cover. Plethora of plays. At one point or another. Yes. I would love to cover Vanya and Sonia and Masha. And Me too. I've never read I've it. never read it and I really want to. Yep. Let's hate myself for not reading it. And sure. then also another one of his famous works is Sister Mary Ignatius Explains It All to You. For you. Um, but you know, when he came out of, you know, Juilliard where they listened to violin music all the time, um, he wrote several short plays that are collectively grouped as fifth planet and other plays. And they're called like cockeyed and engaging little one act comedies. Um, and they were first presented at the Beowulf Alley theater company in good old Tuscan, Arizona. So this boy is just kind of like all, oh, (laughs) <laughs> i'm so stupid okay. tucson arizona um yep so <laughs> <laughs> we love tucson we good old i'm so excited about that too actually tucson is like you know where did they film they filmed uh uh what there's a sitcom that takes place in tucson george lopez <gasps> no that's not the song Anyway, oh, that, that's that, that's the mm. one. That's the same song. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so he wrote his uh first full length play, Skyscraper, in 1997. It ran off Broadway, and it concerns a group uh of students, not of students, but of people, if you will, attempting to save a historic skyscraper from being demolished um cute so that was a play that came right before our play we're covering today his best work um i don't know best is a loose term but it won the 2001 tony award for best play as well as the pulitzer prize for drama yeah easily his most well-known easily easily his best yes yeah um, he received the Kessel Ring Prize in 2000 for proof, and this prize is given to the playwright who shows the most promise and comes with a $10,000 monetary award. So good for him. This guy's going places. Davy. Um, the original play starred Mary Louise Parker, which is a callback to a past episode. What epi? I mean, I saw it there, but I Dang would not it. have known that. I would not have known that. Um, Mary or Mary Louise Parker was in how? No, 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 she was in How I Learned to Drive. Uh, nice. She played Little Bits. Um, she originated that character. And she played which character in this? Catherine. Great. She originated Catherine. Yeah. Awesome. And she, uh, that she, it's one of her things she's like most well known for oh. is this actually. Um, and Gwyneth Paltrow actually played Catherine in the London stage production, and then she was cast in the movie when they created Get out. one. Um, he adapted it into a film. So uh, our guy David helped write the screenplay and it starred Gwyneth Paltrow, Jake Gyllenhaal, and Anthony Hopkins. All-star cast, right? Yeah. And it was directed by John Madden, who directed Shakespeare in Love, which shout out to Gwyneth for being the lead in both. Hashtag networking. Hashtag she found her team. Well, did she ever work with him again? Okay, well, (laughs) I thought that was interesting. John John Madden, after two films with Gwyneth, he was like, yeah, I'm done. (laughs) I'm okay. Um, no, but I looked at some clips from Proof, the movie. Oh, really? Not I good. think I've seen them from a long time ago. It, stuff I looked at, especially with the stuff with Jake Gyllenhaal, I was like, ooh, he got better as he got older. <laughs> Jake is a hit and a mess. I will, I, I'll tell you why. Some... I don't always love him no, in everything. He, no, no, no. I think he's, I think he's got some really good works, obviously. And some just like, nah, it's fine. You're fine. Yeah. yeah. And he's been on Broadway, which I respect. I he is an actor and he wants yeah. to constantly be creating like different characters. Yeah. And I love that. Had I seen Sunday in the park with George with him as the lead, I would have, that would have changed my life. Um, but you just I didn't know it. Would've. I didn't see it. Yeah. Um, that's okay. Gwyneth was actually, um, she, I guess did a good job, even though Madden didn't approve maybe. Because she was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Actress. Didn't win. Nominated, though. Which is... Are Golden Globes, do they even mean anything? <laughs> Does anyone care about the Golden Globes? 
I would love to be nominated for well, a Golden Globe. Obviously. See, yes. they mean Does someone something. like Gwyneth care about the Golden Globes? Well, I hear she's kind of a jerk, so maybe not. That's what I've heard, too. Yeah. I've heard Jake is kind of a jerk, too. Really? I don't know. Are you just throwing that out there? Yeah. I, I was hoping that you agreed with me and then be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I... I think he's a gem. He was on he John Mulaney's comedy show. The, the, you can't the, be the friends Sack with Lunch John Mulaney, Mulaney if you're a jerk. Yeah, yeah. that's true. You know, that's getting a season two or an, a second episode. <laughs> I am obsessed. Yeah. Um, also in regards to the film, because I love movies, so I'm going to jump in on this moment. Um, so one mathematician wrote in regards to the movie of the three films that were coming out at that time that were about math, which is Goodwill Hunting, A Beautiful Mind and Proof. Okay. We're all within like an eight year time period, which is funny that that many movies about math were made in that time. Um, but he says that proof is the most realistically proof is the one that most realistically illustrates the world of mathematics and mathematicians proof is richer and deeper simultaneously both funnier and more serious than either a beautiful mind or goodwill hunting i think that's interesting i've never seen a beautiful mind goodwill hunting is still one of my favorite movies of all time it was our first double date it was our first double date right shout out to the morrison fam now with three children go you guys you guys are precious um but i don't like everyone is either obsessed with goodwill hunting or they're just like yeah i'm not obsessed with it because of the math i'm obsessed with it because of (laughs) no yeah because of just like i don't know the, the the friendship that's portrayed and the and the just i don't know maybe it speaks more to guys than women i, don't I know. feel like that's true because like that i think that's 100 percent true my brothers like i know stratton and sam like love it yeah they would love it for sure yeah where i am like yeah it's pretty good and yeah i love robin williams and i love yeah yeah. Matt Damon, you know, like I right. love like the story behind it too, where it was like Ben Affleck and and Matt Damon were kind of just writing it because they're good buddies in yeah. Boston. They sell it, and that's kind of like what how they got how on they the got on the stage, yeah. you know, or on the big screen and stuff, you know. And they're like, there's like an interview moment where like Matt Damon is like, "Yeah, we were starving, you know, we would we would have sold that yeah. script for like a like a fresh baked chicken, you know, basically, <laughs> you know." But. Yeah, I do like that. Yeah, that's cool. I like it coming to Hollywood. That for sure adds to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me. Um, But I don't know. It's just like, because those two are way more popular than Proof. But this little mathematician's like, nah, guys. Proof represents our world. It it does have like a certain intrigue to it where it was like, where it was like, whoa. Like, I basically know nothing about this world of like mathematics. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's like such an intellectual world where it's like these people are pursuing mathematics for the sake of mathematics, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or like trying, or even how they were describing that when you're really young, that's the best time to like once you hit like twenty three, twenty four, your mathematics career is over. And I was like, because yeah, what? that's when you're at your like most creative or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, and I and you and we often don't think of creativity and mathematics as like the same, like no. in the same thing, but like course like if you're developing new like stuff proofs 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 um i don't know yeah what's the what's the what's the plural of proof is it proofs or is it proofs like i'm just kidding (laughs) it's it's brief (laughs) (laughs) um uh okay what's what's the plural what's the plural of roof roofs reefs um <laughs> it's not rubs is it hoof is hooves roof is it's, roofs yeah and then proof is proof english is the most complicated language it's not, it doesn't make sense it's not true that is true it's the most complicated language really yeah of every language yeah a lot of people say that so it's like the rules like don't make sense and they don't no, like, line for up plural and they don't yeah, i mean like for plural and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. Yeah, yeah. anyway all right Anyway, sorry. Um, but on the film, they did have math consultants to make it legitimate. But then one of them later, after it came out, was like, it dismissed the film's uh, mathematical relevance and accuracy. And I was like, well, you didn't do your job right, guy. Yeah, you were a, you were a freaking <laughs> consultant or whatever. Yeah. But anyways, I digress away from the film. 
We're back to David Auburn. Back to Davey. Um, he's had a few other plays if you want to check them out. Um, The okay. Columnist, which starred John Lithgow on Broadway in 2012. Interesting. And Lost Lake, which was developed at the Eugene O'Neill Playwrights Conference. We'd love to, Eugene O'Neill. Maybe we'll cover him someday. We we must. <laughs> um, but he wrote and directed the film The Girl in the Park, which is now I'm like curious to watch because I do like his writing. Sure. And um, he's kind of turned more into a director um, throughout his years too, which I do love. I love a creator on all fronts. Um, he wrote another screenplay uh, for one of his plays, The Lake House. And now he has turned more to directing the stage. Uh, he directed Sick, Anna Christie, and Side Effects. Those were the plays. Um, and then as far as like awards, because we love giving a shout out to like your accomplishments in life. We love it. Um, he won the Helen Mural Playwriting Award, which I assume is very honorable in the world of playwriting. And the Gungenheim Fellowship, which I know we've talked about before. Yeah. I forget. I forget who won it, but I remember we talked about it while we yeah. were in the closet. So, sure, we record sometimes in the closet. Um, I digress. He currently resides in Manhattan, New York, and he has a wife and two daughters. Great. <clears throat> the thing about his life is just I'm like, you know, he created such like this amazing work, and then he's only created like three other plays. He kind of struck gold with this. Yeah, and, and like early he's, on, he's not like a he's I mean certainly not like a a prolific yeah right he kind of just like tapped out i feel i mean he had like one like really really yeah. good idea yeah and and it was then? like the most produced play in 2004 like all of the colleges oh all the gosh. professional theaters like yeah. he kind of popularized more of like the box set because all of this takes place on like a front porch or back porch if you will uh, uh sarah <laughs> For our other, so our, for some of our listeners, what's a box set? <laughs> oh, let me tell you. Um, yes, a box set is when you uh, are doing a play and it just all takes place in one place. So like one the whole place. entirety of the play might take place in just that living room. So you don't have to change scenery. You don't have to, you know, the actors might bring on props and stuff. But as far as like set changes, there are none. Right. That's a box set. And that is like he like repopularized. Yeah, it. he repopularized it, and people Super. were like, "Dude, of course we want to do proof because like it's so easy." To, it's four characters. It's four characters. Yeah. It's one front porch. One set, bare bones type of thing. It's got two dynamite female parts. It's written well. It's written well. Yeah, we love female parts. Dang it's it! It's actually not like it's not like overly crude or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it has just enough spice. Yeah. I don't know. It's a great play. I loved it. I'd never read it before this, and I was like, dang. Yeah, I like it. I think it's um, it's almost too quick of a read for me. It goes super quick. It's hour and a half. It, like, plows it's, through it's, everything so quick. He and divides like, it into two acts, and I'm like, you definitely don't need that. Don't have to. Yeah, it's it's a 90-minute it's a play. Yeah, I would have liked it to see it kind of expanded a little more. Okay. It feels like it's kind of, like, tied up with a bow. Um, That's what I wanted to get into with yeah. my section. I love it. Yeah. 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 Well, are you are you good? I'm complete with my boy David. You're, pl you're complete with the baby. I just, yeah, those are just my thoughts on him. Great. Great. Well, I had a few things because um, I was like, okay, so this play is a lot about math, about a specific proof. And I was like, okay, I'm going to have to re-educate myself on what a proof is. So I looked up a little definition. Did you ever know what a proof was? Um. Okay. In my geometry. So <laughs> my background on math was always like, I was never in like the honors math classes, but I was like pretty good. Like I was really good, at least in high school, in like the lower math classes. I was the top of the low bunch when it came to math. Mad respect. You know, like, and in like, in like eighth grade, we had four different math classes that you could be in. Mm. I was in like, the third, like the third best, I guess second best. No, second best, sorry. Second out of four. <laughs> okay. But there were like a ton of kids in like the first best class. Then in the, in the se next best class, was like, well, I was in, there was only like eight kids. And you were the best of that class. Oh, probably not. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, that saying. came later. Oh, okay. Because like in high school, I got pretty good grades in math. And like algebra one, geometry, and algebra two. Oh yeah. I got like all A's in that, but I was like 
they were easy because it was like I was with the. What I about couldn't. You? I couldn't do the shapes. The geometry. Oh, geometry. <laughs> <laughs> Geometry to me was like the easiest thing I've ever taken. I, and that's where we got into proofs. Oh. I hated geometry. I I loved algebra. Okay. I loved algebra too. Yeah. And what comes after that? Well, I mean, I went to stats. I did stats in college. Did you do a, I did, did you college ever, algebra. I did you I ever take a lot of Did you ever take pre calc? No. Me either. It was too stupid. I like. I guess I could have done it, but yeah. I did. I was like, I have zero need for that. That's not where my brain. Works. Yeah, I don't want. That's interesting because that was the stuff I was listening to. Maybe I'll change your mind about that. Okay, here we go. I you love ready? It. I love it. Okay, so what is a proof? The proof. A proof is a reason why a pattern exists. So a proof might try to prove. Okay, if you look at this, this this algebra. This. Do you want me to look at the equation. problem? Sure. It says one plus three equals four. 1 plus 3 plus 5 equals 9. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 equals 16. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 equals 25. If you take a look at 4, 9, 16, 25, those are all perfect squares. Oh. 2 times 2 equals 4. 3 times 3 equals 9. 4 times 4 equals 16. 5 times 5 equals 25. A proof, that's a, that's a really interesting pattern, isn't it? Because it's a <laughs> bunch of it, it's a bunch of odd numbers added together. Yeah equal and it's like sequential odd numbers it's se sequential odd numbers yeah added together will always equal a perfect square i like and that and they put it into a computer program and that is true up to like a million digits okay not not a million yeah a million digits which if you can you can't even comprehend like how many how high that number okay that's insulting <laughs> i can't comprehend how high that number is. <laughs> no, I'm so a proof would attempt to explain why that is okay that's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. Like it's finding okay. like weird stuff or like weird patterns why, within our why things are system. exactly the yeah. the Pythagorean theorem. A squared times a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Oh, I learned about that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's lodged in my brain. Um, but anyway, there's a diff bunch of different kinds of proofs. I kind of got bored listening to that. But then there was this guy who was like, who was like. People often, he's a math teacher. He, people often say to him, well, I don't have a math sense or whatever. Mm. And he's like, well, okay. But like that's saying like, you know, like I wear glasses. That's like saying like, well, I'm just not, I, like if I went around without glasses on, I just took my glasses off for those people listening. <laughs> um, I, if I went around without, without glasses on, you'd call me silly because I need glasses to see, right? Yeah. So some people have just a better math sense than others. People, some people don't need glasses. Mm, some uh, people okay. just need quote unquote glasses to understand math a little bit better. It's a sense he he claims, and I thought that was interesting. That is kind of cool because I always saw myself as not a very good math student. I I saw myself as a good math student, but only with certain types of math. Like I would say I mean, that's fair. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. I was like way better. Yeah. Like, or even chemistry. Like, I loved chemistry because it was just, like, a bunch of equations, basically. And I could get into that. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, like, if it's just, like, circumference, that word gives me hives. It's the distance around a circle. I literally just got goosebumps. Oh, no, but you're, like, trying to figure out the circumference of a circle. Are you, like, doing all that? Like, yeah. that, like, blew my brain. I couldn't, I couldn't. I still can't do it. Okay. It freaks me out. I'm sorry. Sorry. No, it's fine. Um, I'm just having no. Yeah, <laughs> students. Students. Well, I th I taught fifth grade math, guys, for a semester. It was terrible. Oh yeah. Yeah, and kids would often ask me like, "Well, Mr. Wright, why are we learning this?" Mm -hmm. And an answer that I came up with, because we were I don't know, and you know we were doing like whatever long division, <coughs> which you often <laughs> use. I I use long division now. I don't remember what for what, but <laughs> I've used it in the last week. <sighs> Gun to my head? Probably not, but I've used it. Anyway, but mathematics like just trains your brain to think logically. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of what it is. And I think that's what a lot of kids like don't get about it. It's like, why am I learning this? Yeah. But like training your brain to do that is a good thing. Right. That Even was a question I was going to bring up. It's like, because I remember in school, you know, people are like, oh, how's your math grade? You know, like, Parents would worry about your math grades, oh gosh, your science grades. Those are else. like your cores. 
And I'm like, okay, dudes, like where I'm at in my life right now, I'm 26. I just, you know, I studied performing arts. I love like history and literature and like all of that. And I don't use math that much. Why was there so much emphasis on that and not like of the subjects I really loved more? Right. But I think you have a point where it is like, it's about, um, yeah, letting your brain think logically. And like, there's so many aspects of your life where you do kind of need math. Like you need you a general kind of just, knowledge and sense of it. And you do it automatically. Yeah. Yeah. You, your brain thinks logically. It gets better at thinking logically. You don't have to like, like think about like, oh, well now I just need to logic this problem away. Right. You know, it just becomes automatic the better you get at it. So that was my response to those kids you know yeah i think math is super important even if even geometry even algebra yeah. two. past algebra two i think unless you're i think not, unless no, you're gonna be an engineer or whatever i feel yeah. like i feel like yeah like god bless those engineers am i, I took, right i took du- dual you deserve credits. the eighty thousand starting yeah. salary um, I, I took dual credit stats as a senior i haven't taken a math class since so i'm all cool yeah um so we're going to jump into the plot. Yeah, let's jump into the plot. If you've never read Proof or been in Proof, um, let's talk about it. So Certainly read it. Yeah, certainly read it. It's only 82 pages or 83 pages in the version that was uh, produced by Farrar, that, Strauss, that, and Jerome. <laughs> whatever, this, this, this version. Anyways. Got on Amazon. Yeah. Um, um, great. Sorry. First scene. Wait. Characters characters we have Catherine. she is um the daughter of robert who robert is like a math genius um yep he's her dad in, her, in his 60s yeah very old probably older than 60s i, I would think, think so yeah i think he kind of like lived his life for a while before he had like yeah, got married that. and had children because yeah. he was like a genius in the math world he literally like, like changed the course of it yeah like like unadulterated genius like not just like uh a- <laughs> Not just like I think oh, the he... phrase unadulterated is funny. That's I don't know if it's the right word. I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> but it sounded cool in the moment. Yeah, but he's like like it. like above and beyond, like, right? Like incredible genius. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. all before he turned like twenty three, twenty four. Yeah. So like, it's a lot to kind of like live with and deal with. Yet, um, he has two daughters, Catherine and Claire. Catherine is who the story is about. Claire is her older sister, kind of has her life together up in New York. Yep. Um, and then Robert, not Robert, uh, Hal, Hal used to be Robert's like student, and now he's like a mathematician himself. Yep. He's in a band. He's a hot math guy. Definitely. I think at least Claire thinks so. No, at least Catherine thinks so. Catherine Come thinks on. So. I am going to mess those up so much. Um, I might even just go with young daughter and older daughter. Okay. No, but we're going to try Catherine our best. Yeah. is young. Claire, Claire is, is older. Old. Um, but Robert in his old age or older age, he's kind of starts to go crazy a little bit. Um, yeah, he's and some actually, kind of mental illness. Yeah. Alzheimer's, something. And it started when he was young, too. Yeah. It started in his late 20s and kind of obviously, like, got worse as he got older. Yes. Um. And so the last five years of his life, his daughter, Catherine, um, she kind of quit school to take care of him, to be there for him. Because he was like, in fact, losing it. He thought aliens were communicating with him through books, through codes of math. Um, So that was really hard. That was really hard. Catherine's something of a math whiz herself. Yes. At the same time, you know, she's inherited a lot of that. Right. Learning under the same roof. Yep. He, yeah. uh, she was going to go to Northwestern to kind of like be a mathematician or whatever, study that. But then when her dad got sick, she kind of put that all to rest and right. stayed with him. Right. Claire went off to New York. She's like an analyst. She has some math genius in her mm-hmm. enough to make a good salary, she says, but yeah. nowhere near yeah, she's a what very, her dad has. Very like, very like stereotypical, very successful business person yeah (laughs) we love a successful business love yeah we love it um anyway but she yeah and so Catherine and claire kind of have this like little rough relationship you see that in a couple scenes where Catherine resents claire for leaving and being like well i had to take care of dad all this time you don't get to make all the decisions now just because you're older and he's gone you know like i've been here where have you been 
Whereas, yeah, I mean, yeah, mo- most of the play is centered around the death and funeral. Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, centered around the very the days before and after the funeral yeah. of Robert, their father. Yeah, so he 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 passes. Away. He has died. He's actually, actually dead before the play starts. Yep, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So there's kind of some resentfulness, like between the two sisters. Um. You get the impression that Catherine might be exactly like her dad where she she does seem like very smart she's a little like depressed and she has some she has some men- some like not i wouldn't i wouldn't maybe call it like a mental illness but she certainly she thinks deal- she's I losing think she, her mind a little she bit. does think she's losing her mind but she's cer- it seems like she's actually like clinically depressed yeah 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 and that's a lot of what the play is dealing with Exactly. So like, um, but then also, you know, the first scene of the play is, oh gosh, that she has this whole conversation with her dad. It's her birthday. It's also the night before the funeral. It's a lot is going on. And she imagines a conversation with him on her front porch. And and you think he's alive. Right. That, that blew my mind. I thought he was alive the whole time. She, they are literally talking about in this first conversation, like she is talking to him about like, hey, you know, dad, like you're kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of, that means I'm probably going to be kind of crazy too because yeah. of like his genes and whatever. And he was like, oh, don't worry about that. Because if you, because I love, I love what he said because it's like, well, if, if you think like maybe I'm crazy, yeah, then you're, that means you're not crazy. Right. Right. Because a crazy person would never think like, eh, maybe I'm crazy. A crazy person is completely convinced that they're sane. Exactly. So the very th- fact that you're not you're questioning your craziness means you're not crazy. Yeah. Which is actually kind of from the novel Catch Twenty Two. Oh. Anyway, that's the Catch Twenty Two and Catch Twenty Two. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> I won't go into it. Um. No, it's fine. Interesting. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so she thinks she's losing her mind a little bit. Um. Our hot friend Hal is coming over and checking out her dad's um, scribblings that he's done in, over the past four years. Right. Where he's, you know, his mental state was kind of like getting to a worse state. Um, but he wrote in all of these notebooks, like so much. And a like, lot of like it's dozens of notebooks. Like, yeah. Filled them all. And it, a lot of it's gibberish. He did find one journal where it's cohesive, but it's just writing about Catherine on her birthday four years ago and how it mm. was a good day. Um, but that's the only notebook that he's found that's cohesive enough to understand what it's saying. But then, do we want to go into full spoilers? I, that's what we do on this show. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just always check. Okay. But then at the very end of Act 1, he, he, Catherine and Claire have this big fight. Whatever. Yeah, Catherine's or Claire's, Claire's like move to, to New York, and yeah. she's like, no. So move to New York, maybe like maybe I'll put you in like a home right. where, you, where people will take care of you. Right. Hal and Catherine hook up on the to... day on the night of her father's funeral. Respect. Insane. Okay. That's crazy. Honestly, it's how, not that crazy. How, because... how dare you? No. He took advantage of her. No. You don't think so? No. He 100 percent did. Listen. Okay. You might be some stand-up guy from Nebraska, but listen. He took advantage no, of her. No, he did not because Joan McMurtry, God bless her, another who is, SCAD shout who's out. That? Oh, okay. Joan from SCAD. Sorry. Yes. I never knew her last name. <laughs> you always just called her Joan. <laughs> um, she's my queen. I was rehearsing a scene with Gaines where we were doing a scene from Gruesome Playground Entries, another shout out from a past epi. And um, it was the night of the funeral scene. Yeah. Right? The night they kiss. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we were kind of feeling weird about it. And she was like, no. I, and she kind of told us, like, at funerals she's been at, it's like when people die, you know, people respond to it, like, very differently. Some people, like, want to feel alive. And how do some people feel alive? Through sex. Sure. Some people, you know, kind of want to, like, mourn and like go down a dark rabbit hole too you know like there's different responses to it right and like she was very into it yeah and she was feeling feeling like so alone and like sad and dark and there's not like a rule book of like when your parent dies like don't touch me for a year you know no of course not i mean he was hot he was there for her she thought she like 
needed that or needed to feel close to someone. She hasn't felt close to anyone except for her dad for like so long. And now he's gone. Like, I guess. So, okay. But if he had been replaced by a guy who didn't have the best of intentions, she still would have hooked up with that guy. Would that guy have been taking advantage of her? A but guy. like that was it. I don't know. Okay. Catherine has like a strong, good head on her shoulders. She can kind of like see through the bullshit, you know. Sure. And like, Hal was a good guy, and she knew that. Yeah. And they he they ends have, like, up a being weird a good connection. guy. Thankfully, he ends up being a good guy. Yeah, it was touch and go for there for a minute. But yeah. Anyway. She I, he gained her trust. Sure. And that's what she kind of throws in her face later when. When the okay, so Hal finds a notebook up in the up in the attic, and he he's like, "Oh my gosh! Like this is like the proof. Like it's gonna it's solve the best thing that's like, ever happened." Been, yeah, whatever. They, they don't really go into detail about it, but it's like this problem that they've never they been did. able to solve or whatever, and it's been solved. And he's like, "It's all. It's like I gotta check it out, but like it looks like pretty good. It's like several pages long, whatever. Forty pages. Forty pages long, and they're like, your dad must have written it." And then Catherine's like, no, I wrote it. It's me. And, and that's the end one. of act one. Well, yeah, what a cliffhanger. You what know, it really brings the audience in. That, that really, that really, yeah. That, I'll go out into the lobby, buy some popcorn. I'm right back in Can the you theater. believe it? Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, people are waiting in their seats for act yeah, two. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I do remember learning about this in uh, God Bless Jay Jasky's class that wow, you people got were. Ja- Prasky, I Jasky, and. <laughs> Am I missing Scott? I don't know. But sure. Jay, uh, he, in his class, he was like, people were like so shocked by the end of Act One. Some people did stay like in their seats and just like, what? wow. Yeah. So it is, it is like an amazing like twist in yeah. modern. I guess play reading it, it was a little yeah. bit different because I was like always like, ooh, like what's going to happen next? And it's like, yeah, obviously yeah. she wrote it. Duh. Well, God Otherwise, bless. like there's no conflict. I literally am like, I just think about um, how the actress would say that line. Mm. And not like ever to give a line read or anything, but if I was ever directing it, like it's like avoid sentimentality, avoid like all of that, but you have to make it so clear because it's like the um, like ending of act one, she says, I wrote it. You know, it has to be like a stamp, but it can't be a cheesy stamp. No. You know? And that would be what you have to fight against as an actor. Anyways. Um, I wanted to find it. I'm but. Gonna, I'm going to make you read it. No. Ready? <laughs> Ready? Here we go. Okay. I'm going to start at Kathy. Okay. Kathy. I didn't find it. Yes, you did. No. Well, did you find it or or did Hal find it? I didn't find it. I'm so nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't find it. I wrote it. Inception music. <laughs> anyway, um, um, that's fun. <laughs> well, okay, myself. Um, <laughs> I digress. What were we doing? Okay, Act Two. Yeah, and then Act Two has just like a bunch of like flashbacks where yeah. her dad's still alive. Um, because here's the thing: Hal and Claire don't believe Catherine that she yes. wrote it. They're because like, they they have You're doubts. Too stupid to write it. Well, they have doubts about her mental stability because there's like a whole right. incident where like maybe like maybe she called the police on Hal, maybe he she didn't, whatever. She did. She did, I know. But but Claire it, like in that scene, Catherine sounds a little bit crazy as uh, she's trying to describe the situation to to Claire. Mm. You know, and so she's made to sound Yeah, it's hard to see it no if she's like messing with Claire or yeah. if she I think she yeah. She Catherine is certainly, I don't think she's crazy. She's just very um, unsure of herself and has had a really rough go of it for the last yeah. three, four years. Yeah. So they don't believe her when Catherine's like, look how, like, I trusted you. I was going to show this to you. I haven't shown this to anyone. I gave you the key to open up my special drawer. 
um, it's my handwriting. Like my dad was insane the last four years. He couldn't have written it. Why don't you believe me? And he's like, well, well your handwriting looks similar looks to his. Similar. And, and your she's dad, like, yeah. Your dad was an unadulterated math genius. So maybe he had one last proof in him before he went completely bonkers. Right. So yeah, there is a little back and forth. And the audience, yeah. as the audience member, you're kind of doubting, like, did she write it? Right. Like I didn't trust Catherine all the way. Interesting. Like I knew in my heart that she wrote it because of like how the play wouldn't be interesting if she didn't write it Mm -mm. it Mm -hmm. wouldn't be as compelling right yeah it would be just like oh this play is just about people who lie a bunch and that's not as compelling as you know who lies a bunch if if she didn't write it it would just be about her lying yeah not everyone sorry sorry yeah that's what i meant i don't know i just give my hot boy hal more credit you hate hal Admit it. I want to. I want to play the part of Hal. Maybe he doesn't hate him that much. I don't hate him that. I don't hate him that um, much. I could find the good in him. Find He's good. a good guy. His name's Hal. He took Harold. advantage of her anyway. His name's matter. Harold Dobbs, which I think is so funny. There's like a it's funny a very bit. Math, a very math name. Well, it's like so funny because when she's talking to her, her Claire about, she's like, "Yeah, Harold Dobbs came over," and she's like. There's no one named Harold Dobbs. And you're like, yeah, you're right. There is no one I'm named like, Harold yeah, Dobbs. I'm like, yeah, that's a really stupid name. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's sad. Um, anyways, so no one believes her. Um, you see these flashbacks and you um, – where her dad's still alive. You see the moment where Hal and Catherine met. There's some energy there. Mm. Her dad had forgotten her birthday um, that year. Uh, he's still kind of with it at that point. And then the, ne- the next flashback, he is like – kind of crazy where um she finds oh. him in the sunroom it's freezing cold she drove all the way down from northwestern um because he wasn't answering his phone and she got like super freaked out so she drove to see him and he's just like in the sunroom when it's like freezing uh chicago weather yeah and, and he's, he's writing he's... about the proof of cold yeah and he's like i'm I, this is my the first time my brain has been active like in a long time it's like, so clear and like and like the audience as you as the audience you're like oh my gosh like maybe he's not crazy or whatever then she opens the notebook she starts to read well he what forces it is. her to read it oh yeah she yeah. doesn't want to sure she starts to read it and it's just it's just nonsense it's like it's like waiting for gato like it's crazy yeah it's like january is cold february is cold so and march is cold and i'm not cold in september so the yeah. x is cold yeah it reminded yeah. me of lucky's speech from oh, that's waiting funny. for gato um yeah so that flashback is really sad and we yeah. see that and then i think it's just kind of what's last... so sad about that um and i think i'm just struggling with this like personally in my own life but um when he says like don't go to her at the end so yeah and she's the, and right. then she says like i won't and that's the point where she drops out of college to stay with him i I would yeah. deduce. And then do- and then doesn't go back. Right. And so um I mean, I think yeah, the saddest part of that scene is like seeing her dad admit like I I'm not I'm, okay. I'm not okay. I actually do need you. I need you to stay here. Um that was just like such a heartbreaking moment and I think that David wrote that so well because it didn't like go in depth with it. It was literally just the last two lines of that scene. But they're so powerful because it's so, like, realistic in a way where you're not going to go into, like, a deep monologue about how much you need a person to, like, stay there and take care of you. It's just, like, a moment. Mm. Like, an, a simple, Sometimes. intimate moment of, like, I need you here. Sometimes fewer words are better. Oftentimes. I think most times. <laughs> Oftentimes, yes. Um, Especially in plays. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, because he had to deal, like, his wife is dead. He has no one else there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as a daughter, she was already struggling going to Northwestern in the first place. I think she put it off for a year. And then, anyways, yeah. So Yeah, so, yeah, I mean. I found that really sad. It is. And then the ending of the play is a little disappointing, in my opinion. Interesting. Yeah. Like, what is it? It's just, like, I read this, like, a week ago. It was, like, it was, like, it's clear that at the end of the play that the proof is actually Catherine's right yeah Not Robert's and so, she starts explaining it to Hal and their boyfriend and girlfriend I guess and then that's the play 
like, what are you right? twelve? Boyfriend and girlfriend. Um <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm twelve. <laughs> I just think they're that's somewhere funny. between and now they're dating. Um, well, that's kind of what it seemed like. It was just like, yep, happily ever after. No, well, I do, that's what I'm saying, where I do feel like it's tied with a bow. Except for maybe the beginning of that scene, Claire and Catherine. Claire's like, dude, you're going to love New York. It's super sick. I'm sorry you've been depressed and sleeping for a week and not able to get out of bed. But in New York, it will be better. And Catherine's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm sure I'll be totally cured. And I'm going to tell my therapist it's all your fault. And it's going to be so great. And then Claire's like, I hate you. Whatever. Bye. And then Catherine's like, okay, bye. Even though they Claire's selling the house. So I don't know how they're going to figure that all out. But, um, and yeah, and then Hal comes back and he's just like, yo, I've been talking to like six different mathematicians. Like this couldn't have been written by your dad because it uses like modern math in the time of like where he was going crazy. Like he wouldn't have really known about it or mastered it in that time either. Cause you know, there were such like small fragments mm -hmm. and it's not written the same way that your dad's proofs are. And then Catherine's like, I know his are so elegant and mine's like nowhere near that. They're like clunky. And he was like, well, explain it to me. And then we might find the elegance in it. And then she says, okay. And then starts reading the proof. And then that's like the end. And that's the play. Um. Yeah, it just seemed like, Yeah. I don't know if like, okay, like a lot of good, great plays or whatever are left very open-ended. You're not really sure how it's going to end. And this is like, there's no real mystery at the end. It's right. just like, like yeah like she she's probably gonna it. she's probably gonna like go back to school she's gonna she's gonna publish the proof oh, i don't think she's going back to school you don't think so no she's why? like a genius why does she need school she's gonna go to a lot of conferences i'll tell you what okay she's gonna be successful <laughs> that's, that's, whatever she's gonna be successful she's gonna like maybe like even beat her mental illness or like just like there's a lot of hope at the end which is a good thing but it just seemed like too perfect, I guess. Yeah, I and think it's like, it's and like, and like, it's that, it's that, it's that thing where it's like, yeah, they're gonna start dating now. Like, isn't that cute? And you're like, this isn't a love story. Like, who yeah. cares? I don't care that Catherine and Hal are gonna start dating. I think I like their relationship. I mean, I like it. It's all right, but yeah. that's not what it, the play's about. No, I get you. Yeah, I just think it's missing a scene, and I don't know what that scene is exactly. I think it's or... just it's missing a good ending. I kind of wish that like she got screwed over. I right. I don't know. I, I feel think that might like have been Hal a stronger one. Should Hal have really been pulling her leg the whole or, time and published it himself? Or maybe it's not Hal. Maybe another mathematician that he explained it to stole it, and then Hal goes to her like defeated. Sure. And it's like and he stole it was too like the like guy it was my fault. Face. Yeah, it was my fault that I even brought it to him in the first place. Like, it was your proof, and she's like, nothing mattered. We can't prove that it's my proof. Yeah. End play. Proof, proof. I don't know. Yeah, I think that might have been a stronger ending. Because I don't think, of everything we've seen, like, I liked Hal being, like, earnest in the end. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be like, oh, we're dating, we have each other, who cares about the proof? Like, that's not what I'm saying at all. I just think that, like, that would teach Hal something, where, like, don't take someone's work and just like trust everyone around you with it even though it's not even your own work that you're showing them you know like i thought that was kind of like shitty of how to like take the notebook when he has like no ownership over it like he has no business doing that right he's obsessed with he's a person who's obsessed with uh like finding success in the world of math yeah like he wants that he, like, he I thinks wanna, he's I wanna, too stupid to find that. i want to write my ticket or yeah. whatever to any math department right. in the country. Right. So I don't think it was great of him to like take the notebook in the first place. I don't think he had any business in doing that. So I think no. that kind of made him. So I think in the ending that I just created, he would learn that's not good behavior because someone would steal it from him. True. But the place, again, it's not about him. It's about. No, him. I know. But every character can learn something. Well, sure. I think Claire learned that she doesn't have ownership over Catherine. Yeah. And like money can't buy you love, you know? I don't know that song. Can't buy me love. Uh, you don't know that song? Yeah, I, I, I was, I couldn't sing it without you singing. <laughs> so I know. Or um, you're just so in love, you can't sing it. 
Money already bought me love. <laughs> That's not true. You're you ever... a teacher. <laughs> I don't know. You ever been to Applebee's? <laughs> They're going under. Um. <laughs> Anyways, that's proof. Anyways, that's proof. Um, great. I have some uh, questions for you. Really? Um, which we answered some of it during it. There, there was like a, a little bit that I wanted to like. Oh. Dave, not a bit, but David Auburn. Partly like why he wrote this play, he wanted to write actually two plays at one point. Mm -hmm. And he's like, one play was going to be about two sisters who find something after a parent's death. Oh. Which they do. And then another play was going to be about inheriting mental illness and how someone deals with that. And he's like, well, that's actually one play. And then he wrote this. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So. It is. Uh, yeah. I, let's talk about, like, Catherine's. Don't look at the questions. You I'm cheater. not. I'm looking at the mic. Um, so let's talk about Catherine's, like, mental illness. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. So I think she is actually like going crazy and losing her mind, just like your dad. I think she's like really? a heightened version of her dad, but she hasn't had I think she's as just, much of the chances as he. No, really. Staying in bed for a week. She sees him. She talks to him. Could have been a dream. It's not. Hal comes into the scene, and she's like embarrassed. She was talking to her dad. Oh, I took it as a dream. No. But okay. She was drinking champagne. They found champagne the next day. You can drink champagne in the morning. I don't know. Like Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I that's, think yeah, that I didn't I I guess I just hadn't thought about it like that. That yeah. it was literally happening, that she was literally talking to you. I think because it happens at a couple points. Okay. Yeah. And I think like because of the circumstances of her life, because she had to stay home and take care of her dad, like she didn't if she was on the same path as her dad was at his point in his life, I think she probably would have had more success than he even did. But because her life got so sidetracked because of like taking care of her dad, because everything going on with her family, mm. she wasn't as successful or it came later. Yeah. And I think she's literally going to go on the same path her dad did. That's really sad. Mentally. I think that's that that makes the play better. Yeah. Is that she's yeah because she is on the same trajectory she's about the same age as he was when he right. started to show signs and, and changing the course of mathematical and history the course, of the course of mathematical history what huh. we know what that means proves <laughs> creeps um creeps. but yeah so i don't know i thought that was it's yeah it's kind of sad but also it's the mad genius it's like a, you take the mad with the genius you know yeah, and that would be interesting to play how you play that as an actress. Yeah, is like how crazy yeah. do you make Catherine? Um, well, because again, I think she hides it. Obviously, I think she plays off she's too cool for school like all the time. Right. Yeah. But she at the same time is wondering if she's crazy. Mm-hmm. So. It's stressing her out. Yeah. So I think she is. Okay. Anyways, Great. I mean, because like. I've known depressed people. I've never had really the conversation of like, am I crazy? Okay. Are we talking like schizophrenia? Like she's seeing people, she's hearing voices, she's... Well, I don't know if that's the exact definition of schizophrenia, but I do think she's seeing her dad. Okay. And having conversations with him. And she thinks he's alive and has to be like reminded or brought back into the actual yeah. reality i think that's like that's that's yeah that's uh I that's a little that's know. a little bits of schizophrenia yeah for sure. yeah so i don't know okay something to think about now i want to talk about Great. uh who is hotter Catherine or hal um i was gonna go with hal because i don't think that people with schizophrenia are someone you'd want to be with Okay, that's hurtful to schizophrenia. People with schizophrenia. I, sorry. I was gonna say, Ka I think Catherine's hotter because she was like I, the one who brought up, like, so what's sex like at these conferences? And I was like, whoa, bold. That's hot girl energy. <laughs> you know. Is hot girl energy, like, staying? Is 
Go with okay, me. I feel like that's like the only hot girl energy she gives off the whole part. And then they kiss, and then they hook up. So I think she got her way. And then she got mad. So why would she pull out that hot girl energy again? Also, it's only 82 pages. You know, we're not on Bridgerton. It's not that much sex in one play. Um, okay. Anyways, that's Great. just my answer. What's your Great. answer of who's hotter? Go with me. Uh, well, my I said how. How was my answer? Um, because he is in a band. Most. most <laughs> I've always wanted to be in a band. I love the part where like Hal's play their band is playing at like the funeral after party, if you will, or something like some event is like happening at her house. No, it's literally, yeah. Like it's just like their friends playing in the band is the night of the funeral. It's the night it's, of the it funeral. It is the funeral after party. Yeah. For lack of a better term. Yeah. And he like, it's playing. I just like see him playing in the band because it's like on the back or on the front porch and he's just like hanging. And then he finishes his set. He hands his guitar to someone. And he's like, I'll be right back. And then he just like goes out the front door yeah, and he like hot. pulls out a cigarette. That's hot. No, yeah, I like I like his energy. I just think he's that's a little hot. like timid because it's not until he... like Catherine kisses him and then he's like, I've always liked you. And I'm like, come okay. on, dude. Tell her you like Again, her. he didn't want to take advantage of her because it's the night of her dad's funeral. So are you admitting he's a good guy? He didn't want to take advantage See? of her. See, he's a good guy. I didn't. It just happened. Sure. Just saying. Sure. I'm just saying that's not that doesn't make it not hot just because he waited for her to kiss him. Nah, I just I think overall, for him to like be like, oh, I've always noticed you from like how many years ago that she he met her. Like you couldn't have done something before now, you know. Mm. I don't know. I like a bold guy. Um. Anyways, so. If you were to paint this set. Painted? What colors are on this set? What color palette? Color palettes on the set. Um, gosh, these are hard questions. I would go with it was it would just be it would just be black and white because that's the color of math papers. <laughs> A lot of division. Like there would be like there would be like hidden black, white, and red all over. There would be like yeah. Yeah, all my math tests were also red. Stars. Mrs. Chronican was just like, ah, this this guy sucks. Anyway, um, um, there might be like some hidden math symbols everywhere. Like you mm. might find like a. We love an Easter egg. You might find, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might find like in the railing on the porch. You might find a little division sign. You might uh, find a little square root symbol, perhaps. Here's what I want. The I bench want... is actually a minus sign. I want like markings of like the height on the wall, but it to be like the math. On the wall? Like you know how like when you're growing up, like they oh. measure how tall you are and they mark it. Oh yeah. And yeah. So I want that for Catherine and Claire, but I want it like the oh, number like really to be small. notated as like an equation, and what that equation equals is their height in inches. That's what I want. Why do you want that? Just cause math. What you can who have would, all the math things, but I can't. No, but who would see that? It's it's just a family thing. It Whoever can come up with the best math equation for their height, it's like a wins a chocolate. The bar. character building thing. Yeah. Interesting. I could see I could see uh, old Robert doing that with his little girls. For sure. I don't know. Might be Diabolical fun. daddy. <laughs> 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 um. But in terms of like colors, I kind of imagined kind of pastels. This is a very springy play. It's a not fall play. This takes place in the spring, I feel. Interesting. That's what, just my feeling. See, I was getting fall vibes. Yeah, you kind of get that with school. Sad. A lot of school sad. Yeah, I don't know. I felt the spring. I felt pastels. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I would go I just, opposite. I would go very moody. Like? Um... Like a lot of olive greens, mm. uh, some like black, grays. I mean, also it's an old house, so maybe, you know, a lot mm. of broken vibes. And who cares? Because it's not like Catherine cares about that. All right, I have one more question. All right. Thank you for going on this question journey with me. No, I love the questions. Um, do you identify more with Catherine or? Or Claire, when it comes to grief. 
Okay. So Catherine's approach to grief is it's all consuming. It's mm-hmm. um um yeah, dehabilitating. My, my like dad would never have wanted this kind of stuff. Right. You know, Claire is much more like time to move on. Yeah. Kind of pack everything up, tie it Claire, with a bow, let's make go. we're selling the like house. Like we're sad. It was a long time coming selling the house. I tried my best to be there as She's much as very I could. She's very separate, you know. Yeah. Like she I just think like Claire could have easily. She's got a great job in New York. You could have had a great job in Chicago. Yeah. Like, what's the difference? It might have been too hard. Might have been. What's your which, which one do you identify with? I identify more with Claire. Neither of them are correct. Well, mm-hmm. there's no correct way to grieve. There are two extremes. Right, and they I think represent two extremes. Extent, I identify yeah. much more with Claire. The let's pack it up, move on. Kind of mm-hmm. thing. Um, not saying either one is right. Yeah. You grieve how you want to grieve. Yeah. I or think how you are called to grieve, I guess. I think uh what about you? I'm a little of like both, but here's the thing. When well, I'm sure. actually when I'm actually grieving, I'm more like Catherine. But I feel like I couldn't be like Catherine all the time. Constantly. It would just like kill me you know i can't be like yeah i mean like i mean it basically drives her crazy yeah so like i would say when i'm like actually feeling sad about you know people i've lost it's like all consuming in that moment and like it's really hard for me but to like keep doing whatever i'm doing living um but there is an aspect of like claire and me that when I'm not dealing with that, when I'm trying to shove that grieving process away for a little bit, I'm like Claire. Sure. Sure. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, that makes sense. Would you say that, like, um, you prefer one over the other? Um, no, because the aspects where I'm like Claire, then I like feel bad and feel like I'm not doing enough to, you know, like honor that person I've lost. Like, like in regards to like my mom, like I feel bad if I'm not like thinking about my mom, but then when I'm thinking about my mom, then it becomes like all consuming. So it's like this, like death triangle, Sure. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So no right answer to grief people no Keep simple answer to grief. trying your best so start a podcast um who are you who would you want to play in this play like i know you told me i think the answer is obvious but at least- i would like to play Catherine, but i think i'd be cast as claire really okay here's the thing All- i think you would i don't know obviously it depends on who you're going against but right but, like, I just feel like casting directors and, like, directors see me as, like, um, not who I want to be in terms of character. Like, I want to be a Catherine. I want to be that angsty girl who's mm. trying to find her way, who's dealing with depression, who's a secret genius, who uh, has, like, you know, this flirty, bold personality, but also, like, this psycho insecurity within her. Yeah. Um. But inevitably, I'm cast as the, like, uppity um, know-it-all sister. Just in in past experiences in what I've been cast as. Like what? Well, when I was in Showcase, I was kind of typecast as a Claire. Okay. Great. I I don't want to be that. That's what I am. You know? I mean, that's what you were in Closer. You were you were you were basically a Catherine in Closer. I know, and it was the but role that was of my life. I cast myself as yeah. that. That was, her, that was her grad thesis. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, if I had a choice, Catherine, of course. Okay. But and I think, think I'd be, be and I do a damn good job of it. Yeah, you would. But I would I, be in this place so bad. I feel like we say that with every play we talk about. I know. <laughs> Theater needs to make a comeback. Um. Cool. But if we were to start a, a theater company, just you and me or whatever, this would be one of the first plays we'd do. Well, yeah, I gotta this, do it young. This and Dining Room. Interesting. We're 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 quickly outgrowing. Yeah, we're quickly outgrowing Proof. I, I don't know. I, like I look young. 
So do I. I look like young 20s. Yeah. Right, viewers? Right? 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 Tell me I look little. <laughs> um, We still get carded sometimes. That's true. That's true. I was mistaken. I mean, my high schoolers were like, oh my gosh, Mr. Wright, I thought you were a high student for a second. Nice. Let's go. Are you ready to kiss the freaking flag? Oh, yeah. Let's kiss the freaking flag. Let's kiss the freaking flag. All right. Um, I'm going to get better at this Australian accent. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, I got to warn you. Yeah? Uh, cool. um, I got to warn you. My, my cast ended up having a theme uh, inadvertently at first and then very, well, very purposeful. It, your cast always has a theme. That's not true. Oh, says, no, this is like a this is a real theme. Like this theme is. Remember old... when you cast only Stranger Things characters? What? We've done that before. No. Oh, then let's play. I forget. Oh well. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, um, there's a theme. This theme is only old Nickelodeon and Disney Channel actors. Why don't you ever take the casting seriously? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I'm pretty. That's a pretty good cast, uh, given, given my parameters. Okay. okay, okay, okay. Starting with. Let's start with. Who do you want to start with? Hal. Okay. The boyfriend. H Harold Dobbs. Hal. Um. Okay. Who did you cast? Okay. Uh. His name is Devin Warkheiser. Do you know he's a Nickelodeon old Nickelodeon star? Can you guess who he was? Ever heard of a show called Ned's Declassified School Survival oh Guide? Oh my gosh. Ned. From, he's, okay, look him up. He's like pretty good looking now and the right age. Devin uh, Werkheiser. Devin? W-E-R-K-H-E-I-S-E-R. Yeah. -E -E Devin Werkheiser. He's not bad. Okay. Got the look. What does he do now? Does he even he acts, act? He acts so? on and off in, in small stuff, you know. Honestly, He's kind of cute. Yeah, not bad. Can we see? He's got the look. Does he have the acting chops? Probably. That's probably the easiest role. But he's still got to be some new one. Yeah, I know. We're not. Yeah. Please. Okay. Four character show. We can't write off people. True, true, true. Who you got? Um. Well, I don't know if you, like, know him that well. Sure. Um. His name's Jack Raynor. Don't he's know. an Irish actor. He was in Midsommar. He was oh. in Sing Street. Did I've you seen, ever, yeah, I saw we Sing watched Street. Sing Street together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't remember it, the actors in it, but I remember liking it. Right. He's just like really talented. Great. Yeah. Kind of like kind of. He looks like Chris Pratt. Yeah, I believe him more than Chris Pratt, though. I don't know. Well, sure, he's a better actor. Probably. He he's like pretty hot, but also like there's a little bit like something off, which I feel like with okay. Hal, you know. Okay. Great. Kind of nerd, kind of something off, but you're kind of hot too. Great. And in a band, I believe he's in a band. I believe he's in a band. I don't know if I believe he's a mathematician, but I believe he's in a band. Come on. If he didn't have the facial hair, I feel like that makes him Yeah, he like looks like Chris guy. Pratt a lot, especially when he's a little thinner. Whoa. Like that? Like that picture looks like he's Chris Pratt. Who no. do we choose? No, I um, uh, I don't care. Who do you choose? I mean, I. Obviously, you choose yours. Right. Yeah, I choose yours too. Okay, I mean, mine cool. is kind of just like a fun, like yeah, little fake <laughs> guy. <laughs> Although, uh, did you like Ned's Declassified? I loved it. Best live action. I wanted him and Moe's to get together so bad. They did at the end. I know. I didn't. But stay that was on kind of long. a that was kind of a, a shoehorn. They shoehorned it in at the end. Right, and it They're felt like, like kind of like a last minute epi where like they could yeah, have really built it. I know. I really wanted that. That was one of my favorite shows. I think probably the best live action Nickelodeon show, in my opinion, better than Drake and Josh. I say I would say that. Yeah. I uh, but I feel like a lot of people would disagree with you. Drake and Josh got really good towards the end. Ned's Declassified. Was I feel like more. I stopped watching towards the end. The the last two seasons are the only funny seasons. Sorry, I'm looking at my next pick. Okay. Uh, how uh, uh, Dad Robert. Oh, you want to do Robert next? Okay. Uh, I don't care. Perfect. I casted Lawrence Fishburne. Interesting. Good choice. Thank you. Very hard to beat. Thank you. Oh, I'm excited about the rest of your cast then. Interesting. Would you tell everyone? I know he Lawrence Fishburne. He's been in. I mean, he was he was uh like the kind of the head guy in the Matrix. Yes. He uh he's 
been in a ton He's in of the stuff. Marvel movies too, right? He's in and Ant Man. Isn't he in He's Sandlot? In, that's no, that's no, uh, that's that's Darth Vader. That's Mufasa. <laughs> that's what's his name? We've cast him. He was before. in Fences. He was he originated Fences. He's got three names. Why am I not thinking of this? Oh my god! He looks great with a cigar. James Earl Jones. There it is. Thank gosh. Holy cow. Um. Um. No, Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, he's been a lot of stuff. But yeah, he's been no, Matrix, Majorly, Man of Steel, Passengers, King of New York, Batman vs Superman. He was in Othello, the film version. Oh yeah, he, he's, got a, he's got a very storied career for sure. Yeah, Mission Impossible. Great actor. Plus, yeah. My Roberts, Craig, and Todd, the famous father from Phil of the Future, Sarah's professor. How dare you? There should be a rule where we can't cast people we know. Well, maybe there is now. Because, like, I love Craig and I want to give him this opportunity. Yeah. I think you he'd make, that. I think he'd make a really good Robert. I think when we saw him in that play, uh, Keeping Up with the Joneses or whatever, the Realistic yeah. Joneses, he did really good in that. He, he did very of, good. He was kind of like an offbeat, like, kind of like, ooh, he's a little off his rocker kind of character. <laughs> Who was actually, I, th- I think, yeah. actually battling on Alzheimer's, that character was, wasn't he? I thought he just Something like didn't that. process emotions yeah. very well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can we hold off? I feel yeah, like we with can the hold family. Off. We can hold off. We gotta, we gotta look at the fam. Let's look at the fam. Okay. 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 My, you might sweep this, honestly. <laughs> with I my, probably With my will. all Disney Nickelodeon cast. Try harder. Um, okay, so my next person that this I is, cast this is Claire. Is Claire uh, is Kiki Lane, who was the girl in If Beale Street Could Talk. Ooh, never She's saw that. also gonna be in Don't Worry, Darling with Florence Pugh. Okay. She, I don't know. She like I'll show you a picture, and like she's just like a good girl and like has her stuff together. You know. Yeah. Like, you'd believe. Yeah, I feel that. Really yeah. Hardcore. Right. Like. Yeah, she's in New York being an analyst and, like, being successful at it. Yeah. You're going to sweep this. Okay. My older sister. That's good because last time I didn't do well. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Actually, I don't remember, (laughs) honestly. Uh, Older sister, Claire. Uh, Another one, Jamie Lynn Spears. Which is funny. Got an old older sister vibe, even though she's the younger sister. Even though she's the younger. Um, yeah, no, she's still like 13 in my head, so that doesn't sure. check out I think, for me. Yeah, no, not at all. But of the ones that I had to choose from, she fit the bill. <laughs> We're not going to go with her. No. Um, no, you're going to sweep this. Uh, um, Catherine. Okay, I, I got to end with our okay. uncle, because we got to do grand finale. You're obviously going to win okay. this. Like, there's no contest here. Um. You're the grand finale. My okay. So the way this time, this whole thing started with Nickelodeon and Disney, was I was looking for a Catherine, and so I found Allison Stoner, who actually in a headshot of her, I was like, whoa, that's definitely Catherine. Allison Stoner. Who's that? She is. <laughs> you know Mike's shoot super short show <laughs> on Disney Channel. She was a girl in that. All right. She well. was the the kind of like punk skater girl in Cheaper by the Dozen. She was uh, with Steve Martin. She got she has gumption. She's got a lot of moxie. She's got moxie. Um, um, and I and I and I respect her for that. And I was yeah. like, and I was that's how it started. I was like, oh, she would make a really good Catherine. And then I was like, and then I already had in my mind like, oh, Craig Anton would be a really good Robert. Okay, we got to keep going with this. Anyway, who you got? Um. I cast Zendaya. Oh, no. You were doing so well. I'm just kidding. She's a good actress. I thought she, I think she's perfect. <sighs> she's too much. Too much. Um, okay. I think she could do it. Yeah. What do you mean too much? I think, like, yeah. her Rue Euphoria, that's, like, so Catherine. I know. I haven't watched Euphoria, so I, I, I'm not getting Yeah, what have you watched? Yeah, you've watched her in Spider-Man Homecoming. Like, what have you watched her in? You ever heard of Greatest Showman? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I hate that movie. <laughs> Help. Don't say that. Stephen and Brett love that movie. I know. I it's their it. love movie. I know. 
Um, Capricorn. Zendaya is like a really great I actor. I know she is. I know. I need to watch. I need to watch. That. And she's like the right age. I need to watch that Marley and Me movie. Malcolm and Marie. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Whatever. Malcolm and Marie. Marley and Me. Um, Same difference. No, she's she's a good choice. She's a great choice, actually. Yeah, I swept. You swept. Good for her. I feel good. That feels good. A first ever YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> now the question is. What have you been watching? It's been a long time since we had this question. That is, a, yeah. Um, I've watched quite a bit. We've watched quite a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's a highlight for you? Highlight is definitely The Crown. Um, did you say that last time? I probably did. Yeah. That's and okay. it's, but I just finished Still, it. Yeah, that's true. We yeah, yeah. We watched all of season four. Um, it's absolutely spectacular. Yep. I'm gonna emphasize that again. Um, I've been watching Survivor uh as a background as i'm doing what's chores the, as the i'm pod, organizing what's the podcast that you've been listening to oh oh it's called even the rich um so i have this like weird fascination and other people have it just like with rich people and like their yeah, lives yeah, yeah like i like hearing about it I like learning about them i like hearing about their private jets their private homes makes me feel a part of it even though i'm very much not you know so like what? What? um so this podcast it goes like it'll do four episodes about like a certain family so they did like the murdoch family they did jay-z and beyonce they've done britney spears i'm listening to paris hilton's one now so it's just like four hour-long episodes of this person's life basically and it's by these like two girls who are kind of funny and kind of do some role play um which is funny because when you're impersonating Whoa. like Jay Z and Beyonce, it's oh. like weird and that's kind of funny. Yeah, um, but yeah, I I really like it and I listen to that quite a bit. Great. Um. Also, we're watching Wandavision. That's what I was gonna say. That's what I was gonna say. Jinx, jinx again. No, frozen. Uh, oh, tell wow. us more about your love totally of. <laughs> totally, 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 totally. It's okay. It was like so 2016, maybe. Um, um, no, yeah, WandaVision for sure. Um, if you like the MCU, dive in. We love if the you MCU. are, if you are not into the MCU, mm -hmm. because it's certainly not for you, you'll be very confused. Not that confusing, but you won't get it, and you won't appreciate it. Anyway. Um, um, but well, I mean, like, I don't know, great performances by Paul Bettany and Mich um, or... uh, Michelle Obama. No, no, nope. nope. yikes. Uh, um, what's her name? Alex Olson? Olson, Olson, Mary, no, Mary Kate and Ashley's younger sister, Elizabeth Olson. There, there it, it is. is. There it is. We've cast uh, her before, remember? I actually cast her in How I Learned to Drive. There you go. And Good I was like, choice. I think she can do it. You know yeah. what? She can do it. Oh, yeah, great performances there. We've also, and I'm excited to watch the next episode. We've also been, uh, I've Sarah's watching Succession for the second time with me. Yes. Great show. I thought oh I was actually gosh. like not going to like it. And I was like, ah, this doesn't seem like it's for me. It's, it's really funny. It's great so acting. Good. Great drama. And, uh, and season three is coming out at the end of 2021, I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I love, because so. it's like, Actually, it's like a satire. It's funny. It's dramatic. It keeps you guessing. You don't know who to side with. Like, has all those good qualities you yeah. want in a TV show. Yeah. I don't know. It's a little soapy, but it's. Uh, but in like, it knows I, what it, it is. Yeah, in like the best way. Yeah, like when you know your genre and you do it well. The music is incredible. Yeah, the soundtrack. Whoever did the that. The production design is just like it's all these rich Unreal. people in New York. We like, love rich people right now. Especially in people in New York. Yeah. It okay. makes me fall in love with New York a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. Um, Also, yeah. we saw a movie. I don't know if we talked about this last time. Promising Young Woman. Oh, highly recommended. It was very important to me to mention this because I actually, I love it so much. It's like become one of my new favorite movies. And I think it kind of has a formula to be like a perfect movie, if you will. And it was it's, directed it's by a woman who... You know, and she got uh, nominated. Was it the Golden Globes this week? Yeah. Yeah. See, we care about Golden Globes, um, which had the most female nominated directors like ever. And she was wow. one of them. Um, no, very well structured. Shoot, I very forget her name. Uh, she's, she's 
Yeah, she is. She's British, isn't she? She is. She was on The Crown. She yeah. plays... Camilla. Camilla. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it also has Carrie Mulligan and Bo Burnham. And um, it's like a satire. It um, has a powerful message. It talks about, like... Um, you know the women experience basically in the like dating uh clubbing realm um dynamic in college i also thought i was like i was like sarah like this is her idea to see it i was like ah like okay like i'll see it but i ended up loving it it's super good very well structured very satisfying ending yeah it's super good and it's better if you like don't know much about it going into right Uh, yeah i had only seen the trailer and i thought she was like a serial killer well Sorry, if that's a giveaway, she's not a serial killer, <laughs> which was comforting because I was like, I was a little scared to go in. Sure. Um. Anyways, yeah. watch that. All right. We'll move on to our move three on. questions. Here we go. Do All you feel right. hot today, um, Sarah? Yeah, I have a little bit of Your a like. Your hair looks incredible. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I had it in braids all last night and yeah. today. Oh, Look so good, it was like good. almost 24 hours of braids. Yeah. Wow. This is what happens. This is why I love braids. No heat. Um, but today I had kind of like a self-care day. I reorganize our apartment. I'm getting rid of like stuff in my closet. I'm trying to like restructure my closet so I only own things that I love rather than things like I half wear slash never wear that yeah. I feel like I need to keep. You know, like that. Yeah. And so like I spent the whole day alone and I never got like lonely. I yeah it was just like a very like self-love a day i needed so i feel hot great william how do you feel i feel pretty normal i guess you know i get to wear my nice coat today so i felt hot doing that and um yeah sports coat i spent the whole day interviewing high school students about a presidential scholarship so didn't feel super hot doing that but you know that's kind of cool it was for it was for benedict our alma mater yeah so it was all right an all right day. It was an interesting way to spend a Saturday. Yeah. So, Keeps it interesting. Keeps it interesting. Um, oh, my gosh. Well, what's, what's our next question? What's my crush? Oh, yeah. What what's is your, your crush? crush? Um, <sighs> shoot. I even had a moment this week. And we're going to be put on the spot. We can't edit this out. We're putting ourselves on the spot here. My crush is... My crush, my crush is... Uh, Jin. Um, <laughs> here's why. I am trying to get more. So I've been a whiskey girl um, for the last couple years at SCAD. That's like all we would drink. Whiskey, Diet Coke. Shout out to Claire. Love of my life. Um, that's all we would drink ever. Right. So like, and then now I've kind of gotten to this point where it's like, okay, I've had that a lot. Yeah. I kind of want to switch to gin. It feels like a an English type drink and I've been watching the crown and like, I don't know, like there's some, there's something there. Um, so yeah, I, gin has been, it's been really good and it's kind of like easy to find at home mixers with where it doesn't have to be like a soda or something. So good call. That's my, I kind of knew you were going to say that. Interesting. Great minds. Unagi. My name, that show. Uh, cheers. Friends. Dang it. And um, my crush is, I guess, the Kansas City Chiefs, baby. Super Bowl. Super Bowl tomorrow. We actually get to be in KC this. when there's a Super Bowl. I'm pumped for that. I'm pumped for that. So yeah. We're chilling with my dad. I guess. Yeah. I guess you know, Super Bowl parties. It's it's a crush. We miss them. The Chiefs. Yeah. It's a crush. So. Um. All Great. right. Last are you, question. Are you mad at me, Sarah? Am I mad at you? No. Are you mad at me? No, of course not. I love you. I love you too. Nice. (laughs) Okay. Well, this is an exciting new chapter in the playwrights. It is. As we venture onto YouTube. Thank you. If you watched it for this long, we appreciate it. Um, Please, 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 please like like, and subscribe. subscribe, Leave a comment. comment, Share it. Follow. Share it. All that good stuff. All of it. Leave us a review. Guys, we have so much fun doing this. And we love, like, we have, like, a good group of people who, like, you know, come back every week. And it's just, like, so fun because we get to talk about what we love. Yeah. 
all the time with each other. And so it's been great. I can't wait to continue this little YouTube adventure in the future. And it keeps us honest, keeps us humble, keeps us ready. Right. Um, also, let us know if you want to be on the podcast. Please just slide into our DMs. Right. Let us know what show you want to cover. Done. We're Done. doing it. Yeah. It's literally that we can, easy. We can do it virtually. We can yeah. do it in person. In person. With we can do it separate because hybrid. Andrew got us a microphone, so we can be distant. Um. Yeah, true. We could socially distance while we do this. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much. We love you. And, and good, good night. night.